Oslo is the capital city of Norway, located in the southern part of the country at the end of the Oslofjord. With over 700,000 people, it is the most populous city in Norway and a hub for business, culture, and tourism. Oslo is known for its beautiful natural surroundings, including forests, lakes, and mountains, as well as its vibrant cultural scene, with numerous museums, galleries, and music venues. The city has a rich history dating back to Viking times, and its modern architecture reflects its progressive spirit and deep connection to the surrounding landscape. Today we share the top 10 best things to do in Oslo so you can plan a trip and experience all the exciting attractions and activities this beautiful city has to offer. Starting with number 10, Big Doi Peninsula. On the west side of Oslo, you'll find yourself returning to the Big Doi Peninsula repeatedly. As well as the Big Doi Royal Estate, the peninsula has five national museums, the Viking Ship Museum, the Fram Museum, the Norwegian Folk Museum, the Kontiki Museum and the Norwegian Maritime Museum. Everyone deserves your time, and most are on the list below, but when the weather's good, this quiet, residential corner of the city is also somewhere to get out into nature or take a dip in summer. At number 9 is the Frogner Park. Free to enter at any time of year, Frogner Park is in Oslo's namesake borough and is a joy for the installations by 20th century sculptor Gustav Vigeland. There are 212 sculptures in total, bronze and granite from Idafjord. Vigeland's works are realist, and their subjects are bizarre, from a man fighting with babies to a woman being ridden by a baby using her plaited hair as reins. Many of these works, like The Angry Boy, have become identifiers for Oslo. At number 8, Royal Palace. The official seat of King Harold V and Queen Sonia, the French-born King Charles III, ordered this neoclassical palace which would be completed in 1849, five years after he passed away. Charles could never reside in the royal palace, and the first tenant was Oscar I with his wife, Josephine. When Haakon VII of Norway ascended the throne after the dissolution of the union between Sweden and Norway, he became the first permanent resident. This plush stucco-clad palace is couched in the royal palace park, and you can book a guided tour of the richly furnished staterooms during the summer. At number 7, Vigeland Park. Vigeland Park, which resides in Ullern and Majorstone's Frogner Park, is the world's largest sculpture park featuring works by a single artist. The park comprises five main areas, the main gate, the wheel of life, the fountain, the monolith plateau and the bridge. Its highlight is its 200-plus bronze, granite and wrought iron sculptures created by the park's namesake, Gustav Vigeland. People come here to sunbathe, picnic and wander the beautiful grounds. At number 6 in our list, University Botanical Garden. Norway's oldest botanical garden has 7,500 individual species and was planted in 1814 in the central Toyen neighborhood. Originally owned by the medieval non Nesseter Abbey, this land was later acquired by Frederick VI of Denmark, who donated it to the University of Christiania in 1812. Much of the garden is taken up by an arboretum with 1,800 species organized scientifically. The garden is strewn with woven sculptures by the artist Tom Hare, and there are two greenhouses, the Palm House, built in 1868, and the Victoria House in 1876, named for the marvelous Victoria water lilies kept in the pond. At number 5, Oslo City Hall.
Commanding the Oslo Fjord, the City Hall is a monumental functionalist building inaugurated in 1950. Work had begun almost 20 years earlier, but the Second World War interrupted the project. You'll know the City Hall by its red brick facade and two towers, 63 and 66 meters tall. Those bricks were fired especially for this building and are larger than modern bricks and more akin to those used in medieval constructions. Inside and out, the city hall is decorated with depictions of Norwegian historical figures by some leading artists from the middle of the 20th century. At number 4, Akershus Fortress. Raised by Haakon V of Norway at the end of the 13th century, this fortress on a headland by the fjord has withstood every siege it has faced. Nearly all of these were conducted by Swedish forces, whether Duke Eric of Södermanland at the beginning of the 14th century or King Charles XII in 1716. The surviving design is from the reign of King Christian IV, who moved the whole of Oslo just to the north of the fortress after a fire in 1624. He modernized the defenses and built a palace in the Italian Renaissance style at its heart. At number 3 in our list, Tusenfrid. The biggest amusement park in the country is a day out to remember for younger clan members. Tusenfrid, around 20 kilometers south of Oslo, is open from April to October and has more than 30 rides and attractions. Among them are six roller coasters like Lupin, a steel mainstay for 30 years, and the high-speed Super Splash, which makes a splash 5 meters high when it hits the water. These are partnered with old-fashioned games and amusements, smaller rides like bumper cars, teacups, merry-go-rounds and the recent Thor's Hammer motion-based 3D ride. At number 2, Oslo Opera House. A spellbinding landmark right on the harbor, the home of the Norwegian National Opera and Ballet, is the Oslo Opera House, completed in 2007. Resembling an iceberg, this angular building is clad with white granite and Italian Carrara marble and has a main auditorium that can seat 1,364 spectators. On a casual visit, you can go up to the roof for free for a phenomenal view of the Oslofjord, best done at sunset. The inside is also a delight, with warm surfaces covered with oak to counter the iciness of the exterior's glass and stone. Check out the number one places in our list, Oslofjord. Standing on Oslo's piers, you'll be at the northern shore of a body of water that continues far to the south and opens onto the Skagerrak Strait between Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Many kilometers of narrow sounds exist, little wooded islands with holiday homes, unfrequented coves and tranquil bays. Companies like Bat Service Sightseeing and Fjorders have a menu of trips, whether you want to see iconic sights from the water by day or night, such as the Oslo Opera House, the Dyna Lighthouse, the Big Boy Peninsula and the historic ships berthed outside the Maritime Museum. Now it's time to hear from you what's your favorite things to do in Oslo. Is there something we missed? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to Greenable if you haven't already clicked the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.